Hello, you beautiful sons of bitches, and welcome to an episode of Storytime. And uh, today's story, I got the idea of telling from uh, just kind of casually, you know, scrolling through the uh, Reddit BJJ forum, and I saw someone who was kind of disappointed about, you know, getting their ass kicked at their first tournament. And I have a story to tell about me getting my ass kicked in competition. Um, don't mind the hair, you know, I just woke up four hours ago you know it's, it's gonna take a little while for me to get that all managed so let's just jump into the story and i need to tell you guys some context first okay so this was when i was 15 or 16 i don't remember exactly how old i was but i was like um you know in high school i was like a sophomore or junior i had been doing some uh some nogi judo with my old judo coach mike ogden for a couple of years and i, I kind of thought i was a badass at that point despite not really knowing a lot okay and I thought I was a badass because I was rolling with people that also did not know anything. And that's kind of how it was. And I had this deep-seated drive to fucking be the best. And just, I, you know, I was dealing with a lot of people I didn't like in school. And I, I was motivated. I wanted to beat people up, essentially. I thought I was going to be an MMA fighter. So there is, in northern Michigan, in the Upper Peninsula, back in this time frame, there was absolutely zero grappling. Right? And there was zero real martial arts. Um, there, there wasn't even, like, wrestling, even. Okay, and there were some decent boxing clubs in a couple of places, but overall the skill set was extremely low. All right, to the point where like my shitty ass at the time was one of the better grapplers in the UP, despite knowing fucking nothing. All right, and there was this MMA organization called Mutt MMA. All right, and they uh they were a local thing. The the guy that ran it, you know, he had his own little Taekwondo gym, and what they did, it was just a way for people to get some MMA fighting experience. And because there weren't a lot of good or real MMA fighters up there, a lot of the fights would be between like Joe Schmo with the bar and Hick that's doing meth over here, and that would be like the fight of the night. So it's it wasn't like a high class organization whatsoever. But something I thought was really cool, and again, I didn't know that professional grappling was even a thing back then. You know, I didn't learn what Brazilian Jiu Jitsu was until I was twenty. But uh, between MMA fights, like every three fights, they would do a submission grappling fight in the cage. And I always thought that was really cool because even though I wanted to be an MMA fighter, I still thought of myself as a grappler because my dad instilled the wrestling mentality in me from when he was telling wrestling stories from his high school days and all that. And, you know, I, I wanted to uh, I wanted to try competing on one. And the problem at the time was, uh, you know, you, you guys might have heard me talk about this before, but the the no gi judo class that i was doing with my coach mike ogden was very on and off and a lot like a lot of times there was no training partners so then we wouldn't meet up for a month um kind of drove all the kids off from the class when i first joined it because of my pure unyielding rage and the inability to accept losing so i would just never lose and then it was just like really hit and miss so i wasn't really getting a lot of consistent training or good training and uh, mike did the best he could but he had his own life going on and we just couldn't meet up all the time so I wanted to do this uh, submission grappling match, essentially. And you know, I got signed up for it. <laughs> I didn't know how to make weight, to cut weight, or even care about weight at the time. So, like, I, w I just kind of walked on or whatever I was at. And, uh, you know, I get ready to do this thing. And I like, tell all the people in school that I, like, hate. And also that I, uh, so, you know, some of my uh, casual friends at the time, you know, like, I'm going to beat the fuck out of this guy. Like, there's no way I'm going to lose. I can't lose, you know. And I go out into the fucking ring and this is when I realized that I get really nervous for competitions, okay? And my heart rate was probably 200, which, and this is before my caffeine addictions ever became a thing. So, like, now 200 is normal. Back then, it was like, oh, fuck, I'm going to have a stroke. And I go into the cage, and I've got basketball shorts on, which uh, I didn't actually own any grappling shorts until I was a blue belt, and Shoyer all sponsored me, basically. So I, I had basketball shorts on with pockets. I had a t-shirt on. The other guy's like a, an actual grappler. And you know, he's got his rash guard and his shorts that uh, don't have pockets and all of that. And we go out there and like as soon as I get in the cage, I start to get tunnel, like legitimate tunnel vision. Not like people, you know, they're trying to overplay it. Like everything from here out was just fucking gone. It was blurry. And I was like fixated on that dude across the cage. My heart rate was going crazy. I'm already like exhausted from breathing hard before the fights even started. And we go out there. And because I, I considered myself a judo guy, I had a very traditional judo stance. And I was like standing straight up. You know, I went out there and fucking tie up with the guy. And I went for a foot sweep and i actually almost got him to fall over and at the point i was like fuck yeah you know i'm gonna win the match and then he went from almost falling to flying arm barring me bad really bad and it was really nice too <laughs> and uh the guy fucking flying arm bars me and um i have so much adrenaline going through my system that i fight it for like 30 seconds with my arm fully extended 
Like, first I try to stack him, and then I try to roll over him, and then I try to hitchhike out, and I didn't even know what the fuck a hitchhike was, and that's the kind, the level of uh, technique I had at the time. I didn't know that was a thing. You know what I mean? And the whole time, this guy is fully cranking on my extended arm, and it's rotating this way and getting broke off this way, and then I rotate it that way, and now that side's getting broke off too, and then fully extended, it's getting broke off, and after about 30 seconds of uh, me not feeling any pain, but kind of like in here knowing something's wrong, okay, I start to hear... And the cartilage start to separate and I start to hear shit pop and tear. And then I'm like, I remember thinking to myself, I don't want to lose. I really want to get out of this. I want to win because I couldn't accept losing back then. And then at the same time, I was like, this isn't hurting, but that doesn't sound good. <laughs> and uh, I ended up tapping. Okay. And then I walked off the cage with, you know, completely dejected and heartbroken. And it's basically like the worst thing that had ever happened to me because I was so convinced in my head I was going to win. And I told everyone I was going to win easily. And, and I got to go back to high school with a broken arm after, you know, basically saying this is just going to be an easy match and I'm going to be the best in the world one day. And, uh, my arm was fucking completely destroyed. Um, to this day, I still have uh, lingering issues because I let that arm bar get hyperextended for so long. You know, I used to get really bad tendonitis in this arm. And if I ever take a lot of time off and I first come back to training, I have to rebuild my arm back up to get rid of that tendonitis again. And it's because I was an idiot and didn't tap to the submission early enough, you know, when it was clearly I was fucked. And I had to walk around high school with a my, my arm in a sling for like a month. I couldn't use my arm. Um and then I got to really kind of self-internalize and get to see that, you know, winning is not just a given that's going to happen. You have to fucking make it happen. And I remember training up until that point in my life, the hardest I've ever trained. Okay. Doing, you know, starting to lift then and realizing how important that was and stretching and uh, just doing crazy amounts of cardio and just begging Mike to run class and come help me and teach me and uh, him put really being, being able to put a lot of time in me for like another couple months. And after those two months of training my ass off, I went and did another submission match and I ended up just tapping the guy out in I think about 15 seconds. And he was uh, like a MMA fighter that was like 21 and I was 15 or 16. And, you know, I, I just like jumped over him and spun in the air and fucking got a rear naked choke and instantly and choked him. And I was like, okay, yeah, I'm the fucking best again. And then I got to continue on with that mentality. But the point of the story is that, like, obviously I've had a very successful jiu-jitsu career. Okay, I've won a lot of a lot of world titles at lower belts. I've even won some stuff at, at uh, black belt. I got to be number six in the world for a while, which we're going to get that back. And we're going to get to fucking number one. Just give me time. But, you know, my start was rocky. And I lost in a horrible fashion that it's basically your worst case scenario. Not only did I fucking lose my very first ever competition submission grappling match, I lost it in a way that could have really fucked up my career. And it has to a point because I, I don't have the same level of strength probably in my right arm that I would have if I just had tapped to the submission. But my ego and the fact that it wasn't hurting me physically at the time that I could feel made me push through it, you know, and I don't tell people they should ever try to fucking let people crank on their arm or do anything like that. I don't think it's a good idea. I don't think the injury is worth the win most of the time. And most of the time, if you, you know, you're going to get injured and not win. And that's what happened to me. So for anyone out there that's a little dejected after losing their first competition, okay, it happens. It happens to all of us. And it just has no impact on the rest of your jiu-jitsu career. Uh, the best thing you can do is learn from it. Try to try to actually see where you went wrong or acknowledge maybe you just weren't as good as you need to be yet. Maybe the guy was just better. He'd been doing it longer. Maybe uh, just the way the match went, okay, and try to push through it and try to fix the mistakes and give yourself time. Competition, skill is its own skill, okay? When I was a white belt, you know, I fucking uh, did a bunch of tournaments and I, I, I won them, you know, that was like a white belt in the gi for like three or four months and I won all the tournaments that I did, but holy shit, it was ugly and, and it was sloppy and it was not at all how I rolled when I was in the class and look, I still have videos. I have videos of my first ever white belt tournament on YouTube unlisted and I will accept massive bribes to send them to people because they're that embarrassing, okay? Um... And looking at them, you know, I, I, it's just, just, I was, I was sloppy. It's just not how I rolled. And, uh, it's because I was so caught up in my head going out to those matches. I needed to learn how to compete. I needed to learn how to calm down. I needed to learn how to play my game with comfortability. Okay. Play my pace, you know, and just, I, I consider competition a separate skill. 
You know, you got lots of guys that are gym killers and they're just not good in competition. Okay. And then you've got fucking weird cases where guys are awful in the gym, but they can flip that switch when they go out and compete and just kill everyone. Okay. And a good example of uh, someone who's not great in competition, but who's a, basically a gym killer is actually Bird. Bird is, uh, he gets so nervous and he becomes exhausted. He doesn't really, he doesn't roll like himself almost any tournament I've ever seen him do. And the one time he really got to roll with himself, like, like himself is when he won the Blue Belt Adult Worlds. And that's a story I'll probably let him tell because there's a lot of background information going on there. But the essence of it is he learned how to channel pure rage into the tournament. And then he was able to fucking win and compete at his best and actually destroy everyone. All right. But, you know, in the gym, he's a monster. Like, Bird is one of my most feared roles in the gym. He's fucking small, but he's fast and powerful and aggressive, and his timing is really good, and he thinks like I do, so his technique is really on, and his chains are really good, all right? And, you know, I don't take him lightly when I roll with him in the gym ever, because that's a recipe for getting my ankle snapped the fuck off. But, you know, if I had to go with him in a tournament, I'd actually feel better, because I know he's going to be so in his head, and it's his own thing he's got to work on. So, guys, if you got your ass kicked at a tournament, uh, it's not a big deal, guys. You just, you move on past it, and, and unless you make a video telling everyone about it like I'm doing, you can see fucking no one knew this, okay? It didn't affect my career whatsoever. So, it's all in your head. Just accept it. It's okay. It's all right. Um, that's the end of the story. It's a short story, but I figured you some, somebody can get something out of it. So, if you guys want to leave a comment about the times you got your ass kicked, feel free. I actually don't give a shit about the YouTube, uh, you know, like engagement, getting more views and all that. But I would like to hear some stories about it because I think it's someone everyone's experienced a little bit. So, uh, yeah, thanks. Um, good day, sirs. Oh, and as a little bonus add-on to this story that I forgot to say while I was in the fucking car doing the car cast, that guy, okay, he had a cousin. And the cousin ended up being a transfer student to our high school, you know, which was a small school. My, my graduating class was like 16. And... That guy was a fucking dick. Okay, I hated that guy. He was a fucking uh, just really stupid individual. That was like, you know, the, the kind of kid that would come so high to school every day. He couldn't even talk. You know, intellectual. All he wanted to do was drink and do drugs. So like my least favorite kind of people. All right. But th he came like a, a couple years later when I had actually gotten a lot better at my shitty version of grappling. Okay. And I was a lot more confident. I'd done a lot more uh, submission fighting matches and all that. And, you know, that kid's... Like, well, you're obviously, you fucking suck. You lost to my cousin in a match. And then I was just like, <laughs> well, what am I supposed to say to that? Because I did. And, you know, if I'm just like, well, I would beat him now, I sound like a fucking tool. So, yeah, that story actually had some uh, personal impact on me later on even. So, guys, losing is not a big deal. It's as big of a deal as you make it. All right. Uh, this will be a little bonus. Bye. Have a great time.